Hi, my name is Dan, and this is one of my videos about old department stores in Hartford, Connecticut. In this one, I'll be talking about Sage Allen and Company, which first opened in 1889 at the corner of Main and Pratt Streets. The company later erected a building across the street in 1898, which finally closed in 1990. My focus is specifically on the different buildings that the store occupied and built in Hartford over the years. I also talk about the different businesses that occupied these locations before Sage Allen moved in, and also about some of Sage Allen's neighbors. If you have memories of shopping at Sage Allen or what it was like to go inside, please share with us in the comments section below. I know that I and a lot of other people would love learning about that. And if you enjoy this video and want more content like this, please don't forget to hit the like button, and you can also subscribe to the channel. It would really help. Thanks. So let's begin at the northwest corner of Main Street and Pratt Street, currently the home of Sorella Restaurant. Long before the restaurant, a building was constructed here in 1845 called the Jane's Building. On the second floor was an Odd Fellows Hall. Here, on December 2nd, 1857, the abolitionist John Brown addressed a substantial local audience, urging them to support the anti-slavery cause in what had become Bleeding Kansas. Starting in about 1850, the building was home to the dry goods firm of Talcott and Post, which purchased and enlarged the structure in 1860. This was a busy corner, as the Hartford Current reported on May 31, 1862. Quote, Main Street from 7 to 9 p.m. is rather a lively place. Last evening, about half past eight, a gentleman standing on Talcott and Post steps, corner of Pratt and Main Streets, had the curiosity to count the number of persons passing that point in two minutes. He took out his watch and timed the crowd and found that 83 persons passed in the two minutes that he watched." Unquote. Interestingly, this was during the time of the Civil War. A sense of the goods on sale at a dry goods establishment such as Talcott and Post's is given in an article in The Current of September 21, 1865. Quote, probably there was never a larger or more attractive stock of dry goods, elegant carpets, rich decorations, etc., shown in this city than can now be seen at the well-known house of Talcott and Post, corner of Main and Pratt Streets. Their assortment of rich dress goods is particularly fine and embraces all the novelties and latest styles of goods imported. In fact, it is the general opinion of the ladies, and they ought to know, that they have never seen such splendid goods, such beautiful silks, poplins, plaids, merinos, empress cloths, etc., and all in such splendid colors. We would advise those ladies who have not seen them to drop in and look at some of the attractions offered, even if they don't care to buy, as the sight alone will repay them for their trouble. And then, as to bargains, T and P have got the goods and now mean to sell them." Unquote. As this advertisement shows, the company sold dry goods as well as carpets and curtains. The growth in their business eventually led to a split between the partners in 1881. William H. Post took the carpet, curtain, and wallpaper part of the business, and started his own firm in what was called the Metropolitan Block on Main Street, opposite Church Street. This was where the G. Fox Department Store building would eventually be built. Caleb M. Talcott continued the dry goods part of the business at the old location at Main and Pratt. He remodeled the building with new, large plate glass windows making the store what the current described at the time as, quote, probably the best lighted room for selling goods in Connecticut, unquote. Talcott continued his business until he retired in 1889. He sold the building to the dry goods dealers Moses and Leopold Fox, 
The former Talcott retail space was then leased to a new dry goods business, Sage Allen and Company. The company had three partners, Jerome E. Sage, Normand F. Allen, and Clifford O. Moore, who had previously worked at Talcott and Post. As the Hartford Current described it on July 20, 1889, quote, the enterprising young firm, Sage Allen and Company, at the corner of Main and Pratt Streets, although having but recently entered into business together, are already among the leaders in offering the latest styles in dry goods to the public. The success of this popular house since it was started a short time since has been wonderful. The reasons, however, are apparent. An excellent stock of new dry goods, reasonable prices, and the employment of polite and accommodating clerks who thoroughly understand their business and give careful attention to the wants of customers have made their store a veritable rendezvous for ladies and others who are in search of dress goods cloaks trimmings or anything in the line of dry or fancy goods unquote. after a number of years the company had expanded to the point that it decided to erect its own building on the other side of main street at that point, Clifford O. Moore left the partnership because he was skeptical about the move, although he did stay on as store manager for another 20 years. This is a photograph of the block of the east side of Main Street after the blizzard of 1888. It was taken a decade before the new Sage Allen building opened. On the left is the Cheney or Richardson building erected in 1876, it later became the home of Brown Thompson Department Store. Just to the south, after the intersection with Temple Street, was a row of early 19th century commercial buildings that housed various retail establishments over the decades. The building on the corner of Temple Street, which at that time had the address of 374 to 6 Main Street, would eventually be replaced by a new building erected in 1893 to 4 by the millinery store R. Ballerstein and Company. Going back several decades, R. Ballerstein had occupied several retail spaces in this section of Main Street before erecting its own building on the corner. It was a grandly ornate structure with a striking corner clock tower. As the Hartford Current described it on July 15, 1893, Quote, the building fronts 45 feet on Main Street and extends 200 feet back on Temple Street and is six stories high. It is of brick with blue marble and buffed terracotta trimmings. The first two stories on the front are of iron and the rest pressed brick with blue marble and terracotta. A large Oriel Bay window takes in the third and fourth story front and finishes with a large arch in the fifth story. The bay will contain polished plate glass windows. The plans were drawn by F.S. Newman, and Isaac A. Allen, Jr., who has charge of his Hartford office, is superintending the work of construction." Unquote. When the new store finally opened, there was quite a crowd. The description of opening day in The Current on March 21, 1894, reveals that modern Black Friday-style crowds are nothing new. Quote, it is not to be wondered at that everybody wanted to go to the millinery opening in Ballerstein's new building last night. Ballerstein's was always a popular store, and when the fine attraction of an elegant new establishment is added, of course the crowd was simply overwhelming. The whole evening long the sidewalk was a jam, but jam doesn't half express it. The current reporter was one of the miles of humanity who stood for just half an hour wedged in like sardines in a box, without being able to move hand or foot. Women were fainting, children were smothering and crying, and a few had breath enough to be jolly. Half-dead victims could get neither in nor out until, in the course of time, a slight opening was effected at the door. Then, with a rush that was a shame to a decent gathering, the crowd jammed forward and crushed women and children until they screamed in agony. Moral, when there were openings in the future that promised to be as popular as this, let an extra force of police be provided, unquote. 
In 1909, Raphael Ballerstein's junior partner, Charles Dillon, who had been working for the company since 1866, took over the business, which was renamed Charles Dillon and Company. The store continued to occupy the building's ground floor and basement. The next two buildings on the block are the ones that would be replaced by the new Sejalin building that opened in 1898. On the right is an image of these stores in the early 1860s, when the tenants included Pease and Foster Dry Goods at 364 Main and S.A. Ensign Boots and Shoes at 370 Main. At 368 Main were Prescott and White photographers who produced this very same stereo view image. Returning to the 1888 picture, the occupant of the building on the right at 364 Main, known at that time as the Woodbridge Building, was Hart, Merriam & Company. The firm, which sold carpets and wallpapers, went back 50 years. It was started by William E. Sugden, who came to Hartford from Middletown in 1843. He became a partner in Catlin and & Company, and after that firm dissolved in 1846, he continued business as Sugden & Company. In 1865, he joined partners Charles R. Hart and L. B. Merriam to form Hart, Merriam & Company, which moved to 364 Main Street in 1881. As this section from the Sanborn Atlas of Hartford of 1885 shows, besides the storefront, the company had substantial warehouse facilities in the back, extending eastwards from Main Street. By 1890, when this photo was taken, Mr. Merriam had retired. The company had then continued under the name Charles R. Hart and Company. Mr. Sugden was still a partner in the firm and in 1896 he celebrated 50 years in business in the city of Hartford. His career spanned a period from a time when the popular Brussels carpets had to be imported from Europe to a time when they were manufactured by the Hartford Carpet Company in Thompsonville, Connecticut. He retired in 1900 and died in 1904. This property was devastated by a fire in 1895, which led to its sale to Sage Allen & Company. When the Sage Allen Building was erected in 1897-98, Charles R. Hart and a number of other tenants of the old building would occupy space in the new structure, sharing it with Sage Allen. This picture shows the block of Main Street shortly before Sage Allen was built and the picture on the right shows the same block after it was built. Designed by Isaac A. Allen, Jr., the eight-story building's Renaissance Revival style complemented that of the Ballerstein building next door. The Sage Allen building's facade continues to occupy a prominent position on Main Street, dominating the view at the east end of Pratt Street. When the building first opened, Sage Allen & Company Dry Goods Store occupied the basement and first floor. Charles R. Hart occupied the second floor. It was not long, however, before both stores began to expand. This picture shows the east side of Main Street, north of State Street, around the year 1900. The block between Temple and Kinsley Street had four buildings. The Ballerstein and Sage Allen buildings were to the north. To the south were two older 19th century commercial buildings. The one on the corner of Main and Kinsley was known as the Corning Building. This picture shows the building in January of 1904 after it had suffered in a fire. Except for the broken windows, the building does not appear that damaged, but the interior had been gutted and the building was condemned. Within a few months, Sage Allen had acquired the property and was erecting a new two-story building, again designed by Isaac A. Allen, Jr. Sage Allen did not own the building next door, which since 1892 had been the home of Henry Cohn and Sons Jewelers. But Sage Allen would be able to connect its 1898 building to its new building behind the back end of the Cohn building. The new building, which nearly tripled Sage Allen's floor space, opened in 1905. 
In this postcard image, Sejalin's 1898 building is on the left and its 1905 building is on the right, with the Cone building in between. Jerome E. Sage had retired from Sage Allen in 1903, and Normand F. Allen continued to run the company. While the new building was still under construction, Mr. Allen was interviewed by the Hartford Current on September 14, 1904. The store had recently opened a millinery department. But Allen still considered his company as an expanded dry goods store rather than a department store that would carry everything from groceries and cookware to harnesses and coffins. Quote, we are not running a department store at all, but we are crowded for room to accommodate the departments already established. That's why we are to finish but two stories of our new building at present. The other ten stories can be added later. The main thing with us at this time is to get into the new store as quickly as possible." Unquote. Six months later, on March 10, 1905, the Current reported, quote, An informal gathering of the Sage Allen and Company employees was held last night in the basement of the new Norman F. Allen building. It was a supper and dance party and was a great success in every way. About 150 of their people gathered for the occasion, which was a general jollification and goodwill party, to celebrate the practical completion of the new building and to promote general good feeling among the employees of the firm, the entire party being made up of the men and women of the store, joined by Norman F. Allen and his family. A bountiful supper was served, tables being set for the entire company at once. The large improvised hall was brightened by numerous large American flags and floral decorations." Unquote. The Current described the newly enlarged store on July 4, 1905. If you had entered the ground floor of the new addition, you would have found the new lace department on the left, the ribbon department on the right, and the section for neckwear and trimmings in the center. Beyond the lace department was the section devoted to lace and embroidery work. Beyond that was the notions department, and in the 60-foot-long space where the new building adjoined the 1898 building were silks and dress goods. Moving on into the older building, the shopper would have found such goods as linens, sewing machines, toiletries, and hosiery. Also, quote, a large part of the front of the building is devoted to toilet articles, leather goods, including traveling bags and suitcases, stationery and umbrellas and parasols. A large, well-balanced, and comprehensive showing of all these goods is made. Many think the parasol corner the most attractive in the store." Unquote. The cloak and suit department was in the basement, as well as the new shoe department. On the upper floor of the new building was the millinery parlor, a brand new department devoted to clothing for infants, and the department for underwear and corsets. Allen was still dedicated to keeping his store to a reasonable number of departments. He told the current, quote, We have no desire to conduct what is generally known as a large department store, and that deals in everything from pins to automobiles, from bread to coffins. Instead, we intend to adhere strictly to the policy which we have followed successfully for many years. That is, to give the people of Hartford and vicinity a first-class, metropolitan, up-to-date dry goods store, a store that shall deal in dependable, high-grade merchandise. In enlarging the store, I have planned to make each department the very best of its kind, as complete as will be found in the large metropolitan stores. I don't intend that any department shall be cramped for want of space to prevent its being the very best of its kind. In fact, every department of the store is a specialty store on a large scale." Unquote. The next stage in the growth of the store's physical plant did not involve adding more floors onto the 1905 building, as initially suggested, but instead was the construction of a new four-story annex just to the east of it with a frontage of 81 feet along Kinsley Street. Opened in 1911, the main floor of the new addition was devoted to the expanded ladies' clothing department. 
The second floor was entirely occupied by the Charles R. Hart Company. Yes, the old carpet, rug, and wallpaper company that went back to William E. Sugden in 1846 had continued to share space with Sage Allen and now had its wallpaper showroom in the new annex. Norman F. Allen himself eventually became president of the Charles R. Hart Company, which was soon totally absorbed into Sage Allen. On May 8, 1914, the Hartford Current announced that Sage Allen and Charles R. Hart had consolidated with the Springfield store of Meekins, Packard, and Wheat to form Allied Stores Company under the leadership of Norman F. Allen. But for whatever reason, this arrangement did not work out, and a little over a year later, the company's interests were divorced and Sage Allen was incorporated on its own. As The Current reported on July 29, 1915, quote, The business of the corporation is to conduct a department store and to sell all kinds of merchandise. Unquote. In 1916-17, the building at the corner of Maine and Kinsley was extensively remodeled by Isaac A. Allen, Jr. to have a full four sales floors. To celebrate the reopening, a Hawaiian straw hut was temporarily erected on the second floor. Also on the second floor was a studio house built in the French bungalow style. The third floor was devoted to rugs, carpets, and draperies. The store now sold everything from furniture and crockery to drugs, jewelry, household supplies, and confectionery. Norman F. Allen, who had led the company since 1903, retired as president and treasurer in 1921. He died the following year at his summer home in Enfield, the town where he had been born in 1862. His wife would lead the company for 18 years, and then his son, Edward N. Allen, would become president in 1940. Known as Ned Allen, he also had a political career serving in the state senate in the 1920s and later serving terms as mayor of hartford and lieutenant governor of connecticut the last member of the family to lead the company was a grandson of norman f allen named lafayette keeney who retired in 1990 and passed away in 2016. the next big physical expansion of the store after 1917 came a little over a decade later East of the Sage Allen building on Kinsley Street was the old mansion house built in 1796 by the inventor, Dr. Apollos Kinsley, for whom the street was named. The house came to be used by Sage Allen, with a receiving room on the first floor and tailoring rooms and carpet and drapery workrooms above. The house was torn down to make way for a new, five-story addition erected in 1928 to 29 and designed by Denison and Herons of New York. It gave the store 40,000 additional square feet. Inside, the entire store was remodeled. Old-style display fixtures were removed to create the sweeping views of each floor that were now the norm for large department stores. This photograph from the 1930s shows the various Sage Allen buildings. It also shows the company's neighbors. Steiger's, which was just across the street. To the north, there was G. Fox, Brown Thompson, and the Ballerstein or Dillon building. In 1923, after the death of Charles Dillon, that store's former space on the ground floor and basement had been rented out to a branch of Worth Incorporated Women's Apparel Stores of New York. The building was torn down in 1964 to be replaced by a modern two-story structure erected for learner shops. Of course, next south was Sage Allen's 1898 building, and next to that was the building that was still home to Cone's Jewelry. This building extended in a sliver that was surrounded on three sides by Sage Allen property. South of it was Sage Allen's 1905 building at the corner of Maine and Kinsley, and east of that was the 1911 edition. Beyond that, 
stretching from the former location of the Kinsley Mansion House all the way to Temple Street, was the 1929 edition. Another building that was demolished to make way for the 1929 edition on the Temple Street side had once been the home of Otto Henning's Cafe, a saloon that had been popular with lawyers and writers. East of the addition, along Market Street, was Hartford's old police headquarters building of 1898. That was demolished in 1955 to make way for a parking lot. Sejala now owned most of the blocks surrounded by Market Street on the east, Kinsley on the south, Temple Street on the north, and Main Street on the west while other Hartford department stores like G. Fox and Y. Smith had created grand contiguous facades along Main Street, Sejalan still had the Cone Building in the middle of its properties until 1951 when they finally acquired it. In front of Cone's store was a clock. When Sejalan acquired the Cone Building, it put its own name on one side of the clock, and the year the company was founded, 1889, the other side still says Henry Cone Jewelers. The clock is still there today, although it was moved elsewhere for a time, it was returned to its original location in 2007. Like nearby G. Fox, Sejalan would also decorate its facade each year for Christmas. In 1946, 40 tenants occupying the upper floors of the original 1898 Sage Allen building were informed that they would have to vacate the premises because the store, for the first time, would be making use of all the floors of its original building. Another innovation came the following year, when the company installed six escalators capable of carrying 36,000 shoppers an hour. Customers would no longer need to wait for up-and-down elevators. After Sage Allen acquired the Cone Building in 1951, it was remodeled to become the store's silverware, jewelry, and gifts department. The last major reconstruction of the Sage Allen department store came in 1967, when the Cone Building was finally demolished and a new structure was built that was fully integrated with the rest of the store. This meant that Sage Allen could also finally create a unified facade along its Main Street storefront. Sadly, the brutally stark result, which completely covered the store's lower levels, was quite a contrast to the Renaissance Revival style of the upper floors of the 1898 building. When this photograph was taken in 2004, Sage Allen had been closed for nearly 15 years. Its surviving suburban branches had closed in 1993. The Ballerstein Dillon Building had been gone since 1964, and the State House Square development of the 1980s had obliterated Kinsley Street between Main and Market Streets. Within a few years, however, the site would undergo yet another change, and it was one that preserved the original 1898 facade. In 2007, almost everything would be demolished, except for the original facade, to make way for the conversion to apartments called the Lofts at Main and Temple. Sage Allen had grown from a dry goods store at the corner of Main and Pratt Streets into a large complex across the street that had been added to over many decades. What remains today is its classic facade and its landmark Seth Thomas clock. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos about Hartford department stores.